I love Easter. Daffodils, hot cross buns, spring lambs, Easter chocolate bunnies that get put in a tomb and then get stolen. And then what? None of that happened. None of it, except in your head. What is the Easter story about and then? I'm glad you asked that. Easter is the story about how Jesus lives. But Jesus died. He did, but now he lives. And if you only remember one thing about this story, and frankly, that's looking a little bit optimistic, remember that Jesus lives. We're going to see what really happened. The story's in all four Gospels. I know those. Matthew, Mark, mm -hmm. Paul, Ringo and Hermione. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. But we're going to follow Luke's account. So we're in Jerusalem. It's right at the very edge of the Roman Empire. Lots of people aren't very happy about that. It's about 36 AD and just around tea time, which means it's also known as the Last Supper. I feared the worst. When 13 blokes book the party room, it's normally pretty grim in there afterwards, especially when they order wine. Although apparently this Jesus can make his own, loads of it. And bread, don't ask me how. My husband Isaac can barely make a pitta when he has all the ingredients. Anyway, it was a very quiet evening in the end. I was not listening at the door. This one's a bit too thick. But it didn't sound like much of a party, which is weird. I mean, it's Passover. I know, I know, it's all about the wine these days. But it's meant to be a celebration, isn't it? My mum used to tell me the Passover story about how our people were slaves in Egypt, but God rescued us and brought us out into the desert where he fed us with bread, which would be lying on the ground every morning. Oh, there we go. Imagine that. So if you're stuck somewhere you don't want to be, forced to be indoors when there's a plague passing over, remember, there's always hope. I had hope for Jesus, or I did. I thought he'd rescue us from the Romans but he's got a funny way of going about it. While I was clearing some plates at the end, Jesus took bread and wine and said to eat and drink these in remembrance of him, as if he was going to die. Isn't he a miracle worker who can raise people from the dead? Oh, I don't know what his game is. Anyway, we need to get this room cleared. Wipe the tables, we've got a dozen tax collectors coming in for some sort of business breakfast first thing, go on. So, brilliant. They left the upper room and they went to the garden and they met the Easter Bunny. No, Luke does not say that. They went to the Easter Egg Hunt. No. Jesus was arrested by people from the temple and a mob with swords and clubs. But why? He was helpful. He healed people. He was kind. He was brilliant. They were really angry that Jesus was claiming to be God. They wanted to have him executed, but they needed the Romans for that. That's awful. So they took him to Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, but he couldn't find anything wrong with Jesus, and he said he could be released. Yay! But Jesus' enemies whipped up the crowd, and they demanded that he crucify Jesus and release a man called Barabbas instead. Lucky old Barabbas. I've really done it this time. I led a rebellion against the Romans. I may have murdered one or two people. And any day now, come to myself to take me away and crucify me. <sighs> Tried everything. Hiding the guard, threatening the witnesses, blackmailing the judge. None of that worked. God did the jailbreak. Here's a tip. If you're going to hide a big metal file in a loaf of bread, make sure it's a baguette. <laughs> It's the right shape. My sister tried to hide it in some crusty buns. You can imagine how that went. And the guards ate my buns. Those were my buns. Shut up. Don't I get a final meal? A last request? No. You've been a very naughty boy and you're going down. It's no rescue for me. Not a chance. All right, Barabbas. 
Pilate's changed his mind. Jesus is going to die. You're going to live. You're free to go. What? Jesus dies and I live? Wow, who'd have thought it? Someone as rotten as me goes free. Doesn't seem right to me, but it's that the way it is. Yeah. Didn't I say that when I was locked in here? There's always hope. No. You said, please don't lock me up. Here's 50 denary. Treat yourself. Well, I may have said that. Anyway, it's a beautiful day. Let's go. So, Barabbas must have been one happy bunny. Please stop talking about bunnies. We need to talk about what happened to Jesus next. He was being taken to a place called the Skull. The Skull? Ugh, what happened there? Well, put it this way, it wasn't a sweet shop. Imagine a sweet shop called the Skull. Ugh, zero customers. It's the place where Jesus was executed. He was nailed to a big wooden cross and left to die with two other criminals. Can't wait to hear how he got out of that one. He didn't. Jesus died. Oh. But. Oh. And there was a centurion there to make sure it was all done properly. Not a very nice job to have. What a day. Weirdest day at work ever. Normally we have two types. We have the mumblers and the screamers. The mumblers, well, they're the ones who have given up hope because, well, let's face it, there is no hope on a cross. And the screamers, well, they're in denial. They yell and shout at everyone and everything. And we had a screamer today. And he was yelling and shouting at me and this Jesus bloke. I have no idea why he was crucified. Doesn't seem to be the type, really. He was a mumbler. And you know what he said up there on the cross? He said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. Well, well I know what I'm doing. I'm doing my job. Anyway, this, this screamer criminal goes nuts and shouts, Aren't you supposed to be the true king from God? Save yourself and us while you're at it. And then this other criminal jumps in. Not literally, obviously, because, well, yeah, yeah. anyway, he's not a screamer. He's a dreamer. He says, don't you fear God? We're getting what we deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then, and I'll never forget this. He says to Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Dream on, dreamer. Jesus on a cross. He got no hope. But then he says to this dreamer, today you will be with me in paradise. Now what's that all about? Jesus can't help anyone from where he is. And then he dies. So that's the end of that then. Weirdest day at work ever. It reminds me of the stories that my dad told me when he was working in Bethlehem about 30 years ago. Anyway, it's dinner time and I'm famished. I've had nothing since a stale crusty bun this morning. So let's have a look. What a sad story. Oh well. Happy Easter, everyone. That's not the end. There is a serious twist you do not want to miss. There is a bunny after all. There is no bunny in this story. If you like bunnies, watch Watership Down. Actually, no. If you like bunnies, do not watch Watership Down. I can't stress that enough. Anyway, back to our story in Luke's Gospel. A man called Joseph of Arimathea took Jesus' body down from the cross and laid it in a tomb. That doesn't sound like improvement. That's more death. Well, you just wait. (sighs) 
Sorry. So tired. Running to Jerusalem because... We just saw him. Jesus lives. It was really him and... Let's back it up. We were on the road to Emmaus talking about what had happened when we met this guy who asked what we were chatting about and we were like, duh, we're talking about Jesus. Where have you been? Turns out that was Jesus. Don't spoil it. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the best bit. So, we started telling this guy all about how Jesus did amazing things. Now we'd hoped he'd rescue us from the Romans. But the temple priest killed him on Friday. Then, Sunday morning, some of the women went to the tomb. And Jesus was gone! Unbelievable. Anyway, where had he gone? We were sad and confused. And then we met this dude on the road. And uh, explained the whole thing had been planned by God. And how it's all there in the Bible, right from the beginning. And he told us how it's not rescue from the Romans that we need, but rescue from sin and death. And how we can be with God forever. Hearts on fire, mind blown, mic drop. <laughs> so, we stopped off for a bite with this guy, and the moment he broke the bread, we realised it was actually Jesus. There he was, alive. All our hopes and dreams was there, eating bread with us. And then... Boom, gone. He just disappeared. Can you believe it? <laughs> Amazing. Can you believe him? Sorry, it's just such a brilliant story. And it means that if Jesus lives, there is hope. He can rescue us, after all. So we're running back to Jerusalem to tell the others, come on. This Jesus is alive now. Yep. Unlike the Easter Bunny. Someone kill the Easter Bunny. No, no the Easter Bunny was never... <laughs> we, we might discuss that later. This true story about Jesus' life is written in Luke's Gospel. It's the story of his life and death and life again. You can read it for yourself. I might just do that. With some chocolate. Oh, good idea. Can I have some? No. Oh. All right, then. Let's go find some. But then after that, we can watch that movie. What do you call it? Watch it down. 